I think we're all here, so we're going to start two minutes early, if that's all right, if, if there are no objections. Um, welcome to a work session. This is a little bit more, less formal than our board meeting. We try to delve into things. At a commission meeting, uh, Gwen Evans came and talked to some of us when we were there about when he went to the SRO training in Gatlinburg and how excited and how passionate he was about what he learned there and asked me for the opportunity to, for, for 10 minutes, I won't time you, but you know, that he could come and share what he learned and, and was so impressed with it. And so he has a commission meeting at 6.30, so I'm going to let him go first. Gwen? Thank you, ma'am. And I'll try to keep it less than 10 minutes, but I do have to apologize. My wife says anytime I'm passionate about something, I get long-winded. So just throw something at me if you need to. Yeah, about three years ago, for those of you who don't know, my wife's assistant principal at the middle school, and it was her rotation to go to the SRO conference. And she was like, I don't want to go by myself. Will you go? And I'm like, yeah, whatever. And, you know, going to Pigeon Forge and shopping and Root Canal, I would have to, you know, it would be hard. So I went to Eric, and I said, Mr. Perriman, I said, I've got to go this with her. Do you have a space? So I got to go three years ago and was floored, absolutely floored about what I learned. I learned more in that one PD than I have learned in the previous 18 years. So I got the opportunity. Uh, she had to go back this year, and this was NASRO, the national. And again, he was gracious enough to get me there. And ladies and gentlemen, every teacher, every administrator, every county commissioner, every school board member needs to hear what they've got to say. Now, I'm probably one of the few teachers in the county that's had a 357 Magnum re removed from their classroom. And <clears throat> I couldn't protect those kids if they had decided to do something about with it. The only thing that saved those kids that day was he showed it to somebody, and they went and told. And they took it out of my classroom, and I still get weak thinking about it. In 1983, I was sitting in a classroom at UT Martin, knock on the door, guy walks in, long hair, rough holes in the jeans. Now we call that style. Back then, that was 357 Magnum, robbed the class. And the reason I know that's what it was, because it was about five feet away, and I could have reached out and touched it. Both of those situations, I entrusted somebody else with my safety. Now, when I walk out that door and get off the school property, pull that 357, and we may have to talk. But 13,000 of our children walk in our doors each and every day, and it's our duty to protect them. And we don't, as teachers, don't have the tools. They talked about stuff I had no idea existed. I thought Miracle Whip was stuff you put on a pie or ice cream. I didn't know if you turned it up right and huffed the nitrous oxide that you could get high off that stuff. I didn't know that the hat you take off, I wear a hat all the time, with a little crown on it, if you peel it back, that's where they hide their drugs. This is a fact that I learned, and, and I just, since 2012, since Sandy Hook, the guy asked at the presentation, how many shootings have there, school shootings have there been? And, you know, everybody can name Sandy Hook, Virginia Tech, okay. 43 states, 239-plus shootings, 438 injured, 138 dead in the United States since 2012. 2019, this year, we've already had two, 22 shootings in schools where students were injured or faculty was injured or killed. 22 this year. Now, I'll give you another stat. In over 60 years, there's not been a death in a school in the United States caused by fire. Every year, we, every month, we practice a fire drill. Every month. We have yet to practice an active killing drill. And it's not active shooters, it's active killing. There was a killing up um, just, I forget the state, where the guy walked in with a hammer. That's what we're facing as teachers. And then I go to state P, uh, PD where, and Ms. Brown, Dr. Brown here, she can attest. I've been to six different state trainings where I sat there and unpacked the standards. That meant sit down, get your pencil and paper out, underline the nouns, and circle the verbs. I have three college degrees and a wife who teaches English. I know how to read the English language. But I had no clue. He was talking about things about drugs and, and vapes and guns and knives, and these were people, uh, and then you had Bernie James, who, if you don't know those who went, is a professor who talks about school law. 
when I got my EDS, I took a class in school law. It was eye-opening. But when that man speaks, he talks about things that teachers need to know, what our rights are, what we need to be looking for to keep our children safe. And we're not doing it. We're practicing for fire drills. We just built two beautiful schools, $65 million. Of $65 million, about $45 million of that was making sure it wouldn't burn. You could pour gas on that thing and it wouldn't burn. But not a single PD minute on what to do if somebody walks in with a knife, a gun, or like in, uh, was it Russian, um, Russia, 1,000 dead and wounded when they took over a middle school, elementary school, wired it for bombs, and they really don't know what happened. But since 2012, 239 plus shootings, 138 dead in the United States alone. And we're talking about underlining nouns and verbs. Um, I sit and listen, and, and, and the cool thing about it is, and I left my, my wife made me leave all my, as a teacher, you have to bring props, you know. She made me leave them at home. She said, no, you can't do that. But anyway, one of the coolest classes I sat through was what to do in case of an active shooter. And have you ever seen the little, you know, you take those red pointers, and you, laser pointers, and you do real fast back and forth, and it's got a tail on the end of it? There's no tail on the end of that. It takes our brain, our eyes, that much of a second to rearrange to see that circle moving, and our eye puts a tail on it. What has that got to do? If you throw at something and somebody's shooting, that's what he did. He sat there throwing stuff, and I had a tennis ball I was going to show you. And all of a sudden, and the guy ducked. Split second, 10 feet. And statistically, most shooters are bad shots. If you're a professionally trained military, you shoot, or, or as Officer Morris will tell you, center mass. 85% hits are here, here, and here if you're moving. They start with the Alice training. It's called Alice training. That's one option. I teach my kid run, hide, fight. Been teaching them in class for several years. You're talking about a proud daddy. We had the last hard lockdown we had at school last year. I had to walk out and shop the, or shut the lock door, uh, shop doors. When I come back, they'd stacked every chair we had in front of both doors. I just sat down and said, y'all got the day off. They had, they had, we were doing plumbing, so they had galvanized pipe, had screwdrivers, and that's what they teach. Alice training is one option. It's called alert, lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. It's totally different from shut the door, turn off the lights, and die, which is what Columbine did. That training that I learned, what I learned, every teacher needs to know. Every teacher needs to know. Now, I know it's expensive, but in my understanding is the NASRO and the TENSRO is a, is a grant, right? So it doesn't, is that not cost? Every administrator and as many teachers as you can send to that conference, however much money you can get, needs to go. Or they need to come talk to us. Because 239 plus shootings, Statistically, there are 24% active killings with a weapon in the United States. 24% of them, 8% of them take place in school. No, wait a minute. 24% are in schools. 8% of the buildings, physical buildings, are schools. But yet 24% of the shootings take place in schools, in, on, and around the campuses. That says we're a high target area. And I'm going to quit because I know my time's probably up. But here's one, uh, and, and I'll, I'll throw this last little thing because this one's floored me. In the 60s, everybody taught me I you know, smoke marijuana. You know, the hippies run around doing it. It's not, no, no dame bramage, you know, not going to hurt you. T THC was 3%. Due to hybrid vigor and all that kind of stuff, cross-pollination and all that, our current T THC levels, 10 to 15. Vapes. 25 to 95 percent, that wax that they smoke in these things now, 25 to 95 percent THC. They have no idea, and that was the statement they made, they have no idea what the long-range damage is going to be to the human brain or the human body. And go, go by and see, well, go by and see Officer Buddy and ask him if he's got a vape. Boxes full of them that they've confiscated. 
And I have no idea. I thought it was a jump drive. No, it's not a jump drive. It's a I didn't know. Where did I learn that? At this conference. And I've got notes after notes after notes after notes. I can stand up here and talk for two or three hours, but I've got to go to a vote on a run to the school board, I mean to the county commission meeting. But we need to change our policy. Shut the door, turn off the lights. And this was by the, the president of the International Policeman's, um, I forget his title now, he said that's no longer sufficient. We've got to do more. Teachers need to know so we can protect the 13,000 kids we've got to protect. Because I'm here to tell you, you don't know the feeling until you've been on the wrong end. And you don't forget it. For those of you who know me 20-something years later, you don't forget it when you see it. It doesn't go away. I think my time's up. I appreciate it. What we need, I don't know what, how we need to move forward, but this needs to be something that teachers get. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you so much. And, and do we not need to hear that? Absolutely we do. So I appreciate it, and I appreciate that maybe more can go next year. Maybe we can get more you know, principals involved in how to have these drills, how to have a, a, a drill that really is what's needed right now to at least give the kids comfort to know that we're prepared. Yeah, information. What, and what, what might be an option is, is get one of them to come here. Maybe have like a community thing, churches, businesses, and help th let them help pay for Have these people come. They speak. But, uh, uh, but that was, a, but uh, Dr. Marzak, the, the Dareberry guy, that was great too. I wanted to say thank you. I hadn't thank you, but, but that, that was my favorite PD, but this was our, I don't know. But anyway. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, also uh, tonight, um, Chad, you have a guest tonight. Yes, I'd like to recognize Rocky Pease from Well Child. I don't know. Am I, am I on? Okay. Um, thank you for letting me come and just share a little bit of information. I don't want to take up a lot of time because I know this is a busy time of year for you all. Um, but we have visited with Chad. In the little book, there is some information on the last three years of our stats and what we've done within your community. We are a portable health care cl clinic, and we go into the schools, and we do complete head-to-toe physicals. We do not treat. We refer back into the community. And then we also have a portable optometry clinic that we come into the school. And um, what you see in an optometry clinic is what you're going to see that we manually roll in the door and um, if the child needs glasses they can pick their glasses out and then we come back with a licensed optician and they're fitted to their face and one thing that we do do for Murray County since Murray County let us roll the optometry out into the rural area we've been in Memphis since 20, 2007-2006 but the, we started our partnership here in 2007 and then 2013 we started the optometry program and since you were the first real community that got that um, we provide to the elementary children that need glasses well child provides an extra pair of glasses that we leave at the school so the child is never without a pair of glasses um, we also provide your mandated state screenings that your school health coordinator is required to provide to the state, the hearing and vision on your um, kindergarten through fourth graders. And we do all of those screenings for you for free. The other counties that we go into, we charge them. So if I have just a little bit, this is just a little quick summary right here. And then the, the next is the three years across the board here it shows by each school uh, and what the findings were in those schools and the breakdown on that and then there is also one on the comprehensive eye exams and then there's also a breakdown on the hearing and vision screenings we've done for your community and then um, we provide an in-kind report to your school health coordinator which she uses in order to be able to write grants um, for her programs. And um, I have the 2017-2018 report and the 
2018-2019 report. And um, so it's on the back, and it'll show you what those in-kind services were, which in 2018 it was, in 2017-2018 it was $158,312 worth of in-kind services. And then last year it was 98000 Our numbers were down last year due to the fact that um, registration was missed, uh, but we are back in the registration process, and I have already started picking up uh, packets in your community, and the numbers uh, have gone, gone up. And it all started with this form here. This is what is sent home to the child, and the parents have to fill it out. They have to sign it to give us the consent to be able to see the child. So then what I do is when I get this, I look at it. I have them go through, figure everything out. They tell me how many children um, are available for that school, and then I get a hold of the principal, and I basically know how many days we need um, for the amount of children that we have. And it's basically your 10 care children. We do help with uninsured. We can't do everybody, but we do try to help anytime a school nurse calls us and says that they have a child that needs a physical or needs eyeglasses, we try to do our best to make that happen. Like last year, Kelly over at Highland had a child. We'd already been there, and so we were getting ready to go to Randolph House, so we worked it out where we could get that child over at Randolph House. Um, I say I'm like Clint Eastwood. I get the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the face for a <laughs> whale child here. Um, I am from Murray County, and I just, have moved from Murray, but I have been here, I lived here almost 30 years. Um, this was a program I helped get off the ground. Um, it's near and dear to my heart, and I'm in it for the kids. And um, I just want to thank you for letting us to be a partner with y'all. And anything else that you think, I mean, we can do other things, other services, we can do sports physicals, we can do more than 10 care children. It's just whatever it is that you have a need, we just need to have a discussion and we can sit down and talk, at, talk about it. Um, and the other thing I want to um, say thank you for is I also work with Remote Area Medical and um, the Filipino community here in Murray County and it started eight years ago. We're getting ready to do our fourth clinic. Uh, we've done one at uh, Central High School. And, uh, the last two at Withthorn and this next one will be at Withthorn. Um, we set up like a little city out there and we see around 600 children, but without you allowing us into your schools, um, we could not do that for the community. So I really appreciate that also. So my card is in there. If there's ever a question, concern, if I don't have the answer, I can get it for you. Does anyone have any questions that they would like? To any questions, anyone? Well, thank you so much. It's You're welcome. impressive. We do appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh -huh. And oh, by the way, your two new schools are beautiful. I haven't got to tour them yet. I just kind of popped in and popped out, left them some posters, and uh, I'm going to run out there tomorrow and check out your schools. But they're they're really gorgeous schools. Okay. We Congratulations. agree. Congratulations. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I believe that. Is there anyone else that's here that we need to let move up? Okay, then we'll start up here with new business finance. Uh, you haven't gotten a financial, and there's a good reason for that. Okay. 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 Um, I know at the work session, well, not the work session, the board meeting, we had talked about that we were hopefully going to have the fiscal year closed by this week. We are extremely close. Um, we've already done all the accounts receivable, accounts payable, and accrued payroll. All of that is done. The only thing we're waiting Here, on I'm now ahead. is um, we started doing our federal reporting and e-plan this week, and that is something, of course, that's totally new to us. Um, we met with Brian Runyon, um, our state rep, for or our rep, you know, the help the person who's our aide from the state for uh, reporting all this stuff. He, of course, made us aware of everything that we need to do. Um, when we started doing our uh, final expenditure reports for all the federal grants, there's something called indirect costs that's budgeted in a lot of the title programs, which is pretty much paying 141 for 141 fund out of 142 federal money, reimbursing them back for overhead costs that may be provided for title programs. 
So we have a lot of districts don't do it, but if you have it budgeted, the state says, hey, you have that money available to give back to your general fund. Why don't you do it? Um, we have consulted, like I said, other other uh, Giles County and stuff, and some of them are like, it's for them the dollar amount is not big enough to even pursue. For us, it's about 160 grand that 141 will get. Um, so we were actually trying to get all that in lined up because, like I said, this is something that we haven't done before. So we're still waiting on about three or four more payments to come from the state that will go back into the 141 fund and will hit our revenue. As far as expenditure goes, everything is done and accounted for. Um, like I said, we have preliminary, preliminary uh, financials done, but just because we have maybe two or three days more work left. And uh, again, these final reports, we also want to run them by um, Special Ed and Barbara and Scott and uh, Lisa just to make sure we're doing everything we're supposed to do. That way they don't get a letter from the state stating something got missed. So that's where we are at the moment. And uh, we're really hoping that this week you will receive June 30th final numbers and same thing for county commission. They'll be getting theirs this week as well from the, for the county side. So, and if there's any questions, are there any questions for her? Uh, uh, Doug reported at the financial management that they have worked diligently to try to clean up and have as few uh, audit findings. And you, we will have some because there's just not been time enough to do everything. But uh, certainly looking at a better outcome for sure. So an audit will be here officially starting audit tomorrow so there we go any questions for uh, also Doug said as soon as they do close the books and he has financials he will send them out to us yeah. Uh, okay. yeah I think so en enrollment data who doc dr. Woodard or who who's oh wait a minute Patty okay He told me you were going to be here. Do you need to? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, some surplus items that we would like to get approval to go ahead and put on gov deals and sell. Try to open up the um, warehouse a little bit. We've been contacted by some other. Uh, teachers needing items picked up and there's just really nowhere to put them right now so we're trying to get some things sold and moved out of the way and I and I believe y'all have a list of those items okay it's attached but this is just a work session if you need our approval it'll have to come at the September board meeting okay okay uh, well I'll make a note of that then uh, I mean I, I don't I don't imagine any of us would object but I as far as us voting on it, it would have to okay. be done. Okay, chalk that up to me being new in, with these meetings. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, and if anybody had any questions, uh, the the items are attached, and this is the time we'd like to hear about it, oh, and then great. hopefully okay. we can put it on consent, and Very you wouldn't good. even have to come talk yeah, to us about it. Yeah, we're just wanting to get some things moved out. Okay. Any, any huh? Yes, why not? There you go. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's good. That means we're going to put it on consent. Which Very means good. Uh, that we can almost assure you it Very will good. be passed. We'll, we'll get it out of there. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for coming. Okay. N next now, uh, the enrollment data, and I think you all got uh, enrollment data today. I, uh, Mr. Lang, do you have an updated? Yes, I've got an updated uh, document here from this afternoon. Last Thursday was our 10-day drop for no-show. Talk quieter. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have a mic on this. So last Thursday was our 10-day drop, drop deadline. So uh, we still had uh, uh, attendance clerks and workers who uh, dropped the, the ones that needed to be dropped and cleaned it up. So this is the last as of this afternoon. We still do have some students that are still been entered in. We had enrollment back up this afternoon. So we'll be working through those and it'll get updated. But I just wanted to give you the most recent information that we had since the other was posted on uh, 812. So we've lost 50 uh, pre-Ks or almost 50? We've got about... Uh, you had 383 and now it's 338. 
got some that have not been entered in. These are live body counts okay. from the schools. Okay. Um, that's where we are. We still have about, as of today, we, we check every school, um, and we've got about 90 pre-K kids that will be entered into the system. Uh, so we still have more pre-K kids being added. Okay, I, I don't know if y'all had a chance to look at it. Maybe these figures are not that much different than what you all got. It looks to me like, let's see, elementary was 43.85, and now it's less, 43.76. Mm -hmm. um, we had to drop the no-shows, those that was duplicates or didn't show up for one school that wanted to go on a, uh, you know, so we have to be at the district probably just didn't show up. So these... Uh, Okay, these absent are absent today. That is correct. Okay. Um, so we don't have any big growth in elementary yet. A little bit in middle school, a little bit in high school and at um, Central and Spring Hill. Um, but other than that, we're, we're not that many more, are we? As of this point, not, not yet. Okay. Are there any of you all have any questions about this? Ms. Parker? I just want to ask if we could get a comparison to last year's numbers, either at the end of. Oh, do you? Okay. Excuse me. I've got eight one eighteen. Would you like to know those numbers? Or, or no, where we finished at the end of last year. Oh, not the, where we. I've got also got May twenty first nineteen. Okay. Uh, but but my figures that I figured were on the on the what was on your agenda and this right. is a little bit different but we are not that many different than may and now in fact actually the figure that was on the agenda was exactly the same 4768 at elementary and um, more in in uh, middle school about a hundred more and um, then in the high school not as many of uh, the unit schools were down a little bit and the high schools were up about four based on our may 21st and what was on the agenda but not this this may change it a little bit but i don't see a big growth yet go ahead well I, i'm really just i appreciate you having the numbers readily available if we could just have those added to the agenda that way it's fully transparent to the public as well how our growth is going I think that'd be helpful. Okay, County I just asking and whatnot. right exactly. I just did it because I wanted to to see as I got the figures to see where we were. So, uh, yes, that would be nice if we if we could be able to see those figures. Would you like me to speak to that real fast? Yes, please. Okay, uh, we're still fine to some things in the point that needs fixed, and as soon as all of that is it has leveled out, we got all our enrollment in. Then I will supply you as we as as was recommended uh, last year mm -hmm. that we'll have. The ending of, of, of several years, we're going to add those along the way to that comparison, not just from last year, but the last three or four years. <clears throat> so we'll keep adding that on every time. We just want the system stabilized right now. I just got a quick question. And we have till the 20th, don't we? I mean, when is the last day for for counting for? 20th, 20th, 20th. August the 20th. August the 29th. Right. Okay. Mr. Atkinson. Yeah, just real quick. I see absentees at Central High School. Did you say that just for the date? Yes. 116, is it anything wrong? Why don't we have so many absentees? This is based on the uh, head counts from the schools today. So I can't answer uh, if they came in a little bit later, et cetera, after they did all their, their work this morning. So I can't answer for the total. Uh, but we did have 97% attendance across the district today, according to the student information system. Any other comments? Okay, thank you, Mr. Lane. Okay, let me see, zoning and facilities. Um, is there anything to discuss e the ESA architect's report or Hewlett Spencer, you got something besides Bayer's? <laughs> Is he gone? Oh, there he is. I didn't see you over there. Stan's reporting. 
I'm sorry, are you looking at me? I thought you were looking at Mr. Spencer. Um, well, I can't get I can't get my computer to work here. Um, turn it over. I, I'll just say that there is a report in there from Hewlett Spencer on the Battle Creek schools. The um, I think most of you had an opportunity, or I hope you did, to come to the open house. Um, I think that everything was fairly well received. Those two schools, the elementary school is practically everything is finished. There may be a few little punch list items there. Same thing at the middle school. The only thing at the middle school, the work is not completed on the sports fields. If you'll remember, you extended some additional uh, funds that were out of the savings for the sports fields. Those will be being completed through the fall. Uh, uh, Bell Construction still has their superintendent on site who's overseeing that, but everything's outside the school building that's being worked on there. And then I assume uh, Hewlett Spencer will be bringing you over the next two or three months when they get all of the final accounting done, be bringing you a final wrap-up report on that. It's it's kind of still, uh, it's still so recently done that's there's still a lot of bills coming in that kind of stuff so that'll that'll happen over the next few months but but basically um, those those two schools are just about wrapped up so it's exciting to know that wrapped up and open that's good. I, I, any questions on those if not I'll move on to train because there is right. one thing I want to share with you on the train report yes they they do have their normal reports updates of course you know train had two I'm sorry, three major projects going on in our schools this summer. Mr. Hall is going to talk about summer projects in a little bit and that they were working on HVAC replacement in three schools, Mount Pleasant High School, Highland Park Elementary School, and Hampshire Unit School. Um, all three of those are not completed. There were some delays in equipment from the factory, and so they are continuing to put in some of that equipment through the fall. They did get... There was some work being done in all three of those schools on door and window replacement, and I think that all got completed, but some of the HVAC equipment. It's all work. I mean, that we still have HVAC in all those schools. They haven't pulled out the old equipment and replaced it with the new, but that will continue through the fall. But one of the things that is on the report um, is they gave us the, the annual report on our PAC savings, uh, which is there. It's a summary that they present. Uh, Mr. Malden is here from Train, uh, can speak to this if you have any questions, but the bottom line is the total project savings for this time period looked at July 18 through April 19 was $444,000 in utilities over the baseline where we started uh, several years ago when we started this program, which was actually 82000 more than the projected guarantee. So we continue, and we are seeing that in reality if you look at our utility bills of course, weather, lots of things impact that from year to year, weather and, and all those kind of things. But this, uh, we are seeing uh, savings in our utilities. We, we are spending less on utilities today than we were when I started with the school district, So, uh, which is pretty significant uh, when you think about the uh, changes that have been ma made, additions been made, a new high school brought on, you know, central replaced with uh, more square footage, and then uh, the... Um, fact that utility rates have gone up over that time period. So, but I just wanted to call your attention that's there. And again, it's a lot of information. You may not have had a chance to look at it, but if you have any questions, okay. anything you want to add. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions any of you all have about this? Anytime it's saving us money, then we're pleased about that. Appreciate it. Dr. Margaret. Thank you, Ms. Kinzer. And, and I, think, I think a huge congratulations needs to go out to Stan Breeden for his collaborative work with Train over the last couple of years to get us to this point. Because you guys all remember, we weren't always at this point. And this was something that Mr. Breeden laid out a vision, a vision over four years ago. And now you're seeing the fruits of those labor. So I think you know, Stan needs to be commended for that work. Absolutely, Stan. Thank you so much. We also have our regular capital project report, and, and I will tell you, uh, we're going to show you a report from kind of what was done through the summer. As we're wrapping up the summer, um, we still have some of the bond money that was given to us last year, the $14 million. Of course, out of the $16 million bond money from two years ago, or yeah, two years ago, three years ago, you know, we're still holding a million dollars of that 
which was designated for repairs at McDowell, waiting to see what happens there. There's a little bit more money there for some other things, which we're going to bring you a full accounting on that next month with some recommendations on moving forward. But also out of the other money, the $14 million, there's a couple million of that left um, that we have not. We were, we were busy getting all these projects done, so now we're going to regroup and we're going to bring you a plan for this year. What, what we're... We were hoping to get some additional money to go with that, obviously, which, which the county did not fund any additional uh, funds for capital repairs or capital improvements this year is what we've been told. So we got no capital improvement money for our facilities this year. So we will make, bring you a plan next month on uh, how, we will, uh, how we'll move forward with the remaining funds that we have. Uh, but we wanted to, and, and so I've asked Mr. Hall to share with you a little bit about what we got done this summer, because it's a pretty impressive list, and he's worked really hard on this, and so I'm going to turn it over to him, and I'll pull up the uh, presentation on the screen. Well, I think you all have got this. Maybe you had a chance to look at it uh, this weekend, but um, I, too, kind of asked Dan if I could put together kind of a summary of what we've done this summer, because... I remember going back to four years ago when we were doing the, the Whitthorn HVAC conversion, and I said, so when do we have to get this done? And it said, by August 1st. And I go, when? <laughs> and that's when I realized we have 40 work days from the time school's out to the time school starts, and that doesn't include the days off we have for 4th of July. But, but that's, that's a pretty condensed time frame to get this stuff done and so I'm just this happened because we had some pretty incredible contractors that were able to get their subcontractors lined up get manufacturers lined up get aluminum for windows lined up and and um, so if you can see here and I just kind of put this little matrix together um, we changed and I'm not going to go through every one of them but some of the high points you think we changed out 175 sinks um, 141 toilets, 184 exterior doors, and and the windows are up. You'd think, my gosh, Cox has 356 windows. I had actually said that myself. I thought it was a typo, but at Cox, the frames were good, but a lot of their a lot of the dual pane windows were foggy and just had lost their ability to to uh, maintain a. a climate barrier in there to keep things cool when it's supposed to be, you know, hot and vice versa. So we ended up changing individual panels, individual windows. So that's, that's why that number is high. But if you do look at Santa Fe, we changed out 148 actual window frames. There was, that was a pretty huge project. Um, so anyway, so that was, that was it. Um, and that was done through Hewlett Spencer with their subcontractors. Um, with train, we like uh, Mr. Breeden had mentioned, we've three complete systems, uh, HVAC systems, and some of it's still being done. You know, at, at night they're changing out a few of the classroom uh, units because 40 days is still pretty tight. And again, we got some individual units that we changed on rooftops. Um, had a couple of wall units or some classroom units that Santa Fe put in, um, and theirs was about a four and a half million dollars worth of work. Um, as you can see, I've had a number of comments from board members, from principals, and from parents and teachers. The first thing they see when they walk, you know, when they drive up is new paving. I mean, they can actually see the lines, where to park, and they can see the handicap, you know, the blue placards in there. And so um, John, John Micah Clanton said, you just put a, you finally put a bow on my building. So it was, it was, it's nice to have that, all that stuff done. And we hit 14 of our now 23 schools um, with either ceiling and striping or actually new paving. Um, new, two new fire alarm systems at H.O. Porter right here. Because I was looking at this red conduit over here. I said, I don't remember seeing that before, and that's why. Um, one at Kalioka, and then um, we're, we're still in the process of uh, finishing up some roofing repairs at, at Hampshire and at uh, Santa Fe. So, and you can see all that total, We in 40 days we did about $9.5 million worth of construction. I, I just want you to know that I, I think I've been to, in the last 
couple of weeks, maybe six or seven schools. The difference is unbelievable when you drive up and see that paved and then go in and see the difference. The paint, and I, every one of the principals were just, could not say more. And then to show us even the floor, like yeah. Mount Pleasant Elementary cafeteria yeah. floor, the, you know, the, <coughs> we looked at the thing, at the, at Mount Pleasant High School, some of the, all the things you've done, it just looks so fresh and new. And when students come in to a school and it looks fresh, the paint's fresh and new. And I mean, it's all new, everything's new. You, you get a class and you don't know who you've got or what's gonna happen and, and, and you anticipate all this, but to, to come into a building looks like that, that they care about you. They want you in a facility that's nice and attractive and, and everything. I think it makes a big difference and I appreciate it. And I just wanted to comment with one more thing. Just an example for in the bathrooms that we we put some epoxy flooring down. And you get in there prior to it, and, and a lot of them are tile. And in that grout collects a lot of stinky stuff. I'll just leave it at that. But the epoxy, you know, nothing will penetrate through there. So we we were just Stan and I looked over more than just a summer prior to to see what we needed to do. And, and a lot of it was, there's new technologies today that wasn't around 10, 20, 30, 50 years ago when these things were built. And we said, let's not just do same old, same old. Let's look at things that we can do today with today's technology and raise the bar and make it better. Dave, you can appreciate this because at Brown School, they, the teachers couldn't wait to show that they had a lot of the old, older teachers who'd been there before came. They couldn't wait to take them into the bathroom and show them those epoxy walls. And 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 it was just like unbelievable. That they saw their classrooms, they saw all that, and, and it looked great. But oh, look at those bathrooms! So it's really good. There there are some pictures. If you page on down, we tried to give you some representative. Obviously, we didn't show you everything, but there's some representative pictures of all the things that. That kind of got done. There is some uh, that, as Dave mentioned, though, with the short window, there's still still some work to be done. Um, the um, and I'll, I'll kind of think Baker's the last picture, and I'll stop because at Baker, for instance, we have and we just couldn't get because of manufacturer time uh, times and that kind of lead times and those kind of things. There's a new gym floor going in at Baker that will happen over fall break. Fall break. Fall break. There's also a new. One of the hallways that had some structurals getting all new flooring. There's new flooring going out into the front quarter because there were there were holes drilled where we had to do structural work. Um, I think uh, Mount Pleasant Elementary's getting still got some countertops coming. Maybe some at Baker. I know I'm at Brown. Are there is there any, or is Brown all no, that? No. At I can't Baker, remember. We still have Baker. We still have Baker. material left for. Material at Baker. So there's countertops. There is. Um, it's still a little bit of structural work that we're getting done at some of the school and how. So there's still some things we're wrapping up and some of that work will happen over fall break, but, but really a lot of good things that got done this summer. You all have any questions or comments? Okay, thank you all so much. Uh, let's see, next is request for funds for furnishing Spring Hill High School band room. Ma'am, we got uh, we attached in here an email that I received uh, right at the, the first day of school, where the band director at Spring Hill High School sent the principal an email and said, "We are 80 chairs short. Mm -hmm. We have 180 students and 100 chairs, and we have 30 uh, music stands short. So, what we looked obviously we do not have any budget, money budgeted for furnishings in mm -hmm. this year's budget." Typically, we will wait till the end of the year and look to see if there's any funds remaining and we'll buy some furniture. We did that last year with the new tables in the Mount Pleasant uh, Elementary cafeteria, but I don't think this can wait till the end of the year. And right now, we, we would not feel comfortable saying, well, we think we're going to save some money in electricity or we think we might save. So the only thing that we know to do is ask you, we do have a quote on here to purchase those. It's a total of... Seventy-three hundred and thirty-six dollars, and we would ask if you would be willing to take that out of the school's undesignated fund balance for us to make that purchase. Okay. How do you all feel about that, board members? Do you want to discuss it at the board meeting, or are you willing to put it on consent? All right, Ms. Marinci. Um, so Thank you. Can't see it. Um, so they're 80, 80 chairs short for one band?
so now they are all together in one room. So, so they're all meeting together in their short ADC. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So they're all together in one room. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Can we put it on consent or would you rather discuss it? Discuss it, okay? Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. We will go ahead. We have not done this yet, but we will submit to the finance department a budget amendment that you will, you, that will need obviously to be a part of this too. So um, just to let you know that. Okay, next on the agenda is some outdoor planning area for uh, Randolph Hall Elementary School. Understand? And that was a donation we're just yes. making you just, aware of. Just making us aware, so I can put that on consent. Oh, well, right. typically that just goes on FYI. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Just telling us about it. Okay, we're moving on to policies. We have the final adoption of those we discussed last time. I don't know that. What? Okay. Um, and then let me see. Let's see where we are. The final adoption is on those uh, policies we'd already discussed. Was there any discussion about that? We'll, we will uh, vote on them having posted them for 30 days. And then proposed po policies to post is a new policy on video. Who can speak to that? It's just added language to the current policy for public chapter so that parents would be able to view a video and give the stipulation of how long that video would be available. What? Law, law, law compliant. It's a law compliant. Any, other, any questions? Uh, next is the superintendent's evaluation. Uh, it, it was posted on the agenda. Um, any, any questions about it? Mr. Beaver. Yeah, yeah Dr. Martin, I just got just one question. Uh, could we get uh, all the numbers of each person that ev evaluated you and, and it the Excel spreadsheet. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, I mean, I think that's going to be up to you guys what you want to see. Um, of course, I have that information. It was submitted, you know, as, as well as timestamps. So that's completely up, up to you, up to you guys and what you would like to see. That's up to y'all. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I think you could just. Send, send us that by email rather than attaching it. Okay. Ms. Parker? I was just going to say, in years past, I think that it has been individual, like what each individual board member scored. That's been reported in the paper in the past, so I don't know why we wouldn't have that. I think public. what I've seen, what was put together is, is a spreadsheet that has Everybody. each category mm -hmm. for each person and what those scores are. It's what we had last year. Right. Okay, so that's what I'm asking him to send you. And I'm just saying, why can't that be attached? Uh, well, well, I think it could be. So I pulled up the packet from last year, as well as the year before last, all the way going back to 15. That was never included in the packet. Do you well, all think? It's a new day. Huh? <laughs> it can be a new day. I mean, I, I feel like, honestly, the way that this is presented, it's really difficult for, I mean, it's a 98-page document that with our new Board of Education software is not really easy to find it where is. our where our comments, where our scores are, all of that. It's not very user friendly. So I would just hope that we could do something to make it more user friendly for our our constituents. Yes. Yeah, so so the original file is one merged file. 
So it's got the evaluation, it's got the comments, and then it's got the supporting documentation for the evaluation. And it is lengthy. That's what the boards voted on. They voted on, voted on the lengthy evaluation. So um, the individual scores were never included in prior evaluations, but that's up to you guys with what you vote that you would like to do. I, I don't see, I really don't see why it, it's a problem to include it because I think that uh, I know I know I saw it last year. I didn't know it wasn't attached. I know that I saw it. So uh, it's, it would just be a one-page attachment to add to it, isn't it? Isn't it just one-page Excel document? Considering all of the all of the 120 or so factors, it would be a little bit bigger than that. But I can add to the document. I just remember. Yeah, I just remember how difficult it was to read it last year because the comments were at the end of it. The comments were not pulled out separately last year. They were at the end of the document. That's why I thought it was in there. And, and I know because it was difficult because you had two lines and you'd have to find the comments on it. So maybe that's, maybe we're, we're talking about the same thing here. Uh, it was much easier having the comments pulled out and being able to read those. But I, I think that just in the, in the transparency and whatever, I, I would like to see them included. Anyone else? Okay, Mo moving on then. Uh, next on the, is a supervisor of counseling and mental health, and uh, Dr. Marzak. And I, 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 I'm going to say something about this too because I honestly had not really given this a lot of thought until we made it part-time position, and I've had more calls and from guidance counselors and. All as to what all Dr. Killen did and how important he was. I even had somebody at my church that just was apoplectic at the fact that he was going to be gone and how much they had helped. So I, I know you all got emails today and uh, hopefully you had time to read them as to making this a full-time position. Now, it's not budgeted, so Dr. Marzak, how would we do that? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. So if you... Oh, I, it's... There's a culture here. There we go. Okay, there we go. Uh, made a decision based on the location of the table. Um, so if you look at um, the rationale uh, for the supervisor of counseling and mental health, as a result of the reduction of the position of super supervisor of counseling and mental health to a part-time position to balance the FY20 budget, there have been numerous concerns raised from counseling staff of the fear of moving backwards, considering the strides have been made with counseling and student mental health advocacy over the last three years. As a result of this, I would like to recommend taking the position back to full-time to support the continued work of our school-based counselors and address the ongoing needs of our students district-wide. We will be receiving BEP money for incarcerated youth, approximately 163000 that we did not know would be allocated at the time of the budget. I would like to allocate 45000 of this incoming amount to 141E, 72130105, and the accompanying benefits lines, which would then leave when that money comes in from the JDC, um, approximately 120 or so, 119,000 or so that needs to be budgeted. Which we could, we could use that money to put it back on textbooks or whatever. Okay. Uh, is any any questions? Discussion? <clears throat> no. Yes. Yes. Excuse me. I mean, I, I that is a that is a guarantee. 163,000 back, right? We will, we will leave that to uh, discuss it, to vote on it. At the, excuse me, Ms. Parker, I looked a minute ago. Sorry, I, right as you were talking, I pushed my button. Um, I was just going to ask, with the 163,000, obviously I assume the state is expecting us to educate incarcerated youth. So how are we going to do that if we're not spending 45,000 on that? So we already budget for that. That's already in our general purpose budget. And um, one of the things I was explaining to Chair Kinzer about today is this was a problem that we encountered three years ago. And um, at that time, the assistant commissioner that was working on, with it on me came up with a process to bypass Shelby County to, uh, for us to automatically get our BEP money. However, it was discovered a couple weeks ago that that process never happened. So we have not been receiving the, those BEP monies. So right now we're owed 163000 Dr. Woodard's currently doing some research to see if there's any back money that we'll be getting, but of course that's one-time money, and that, that um, investigation is not complete yet. But we know at this point 
we are owed 163,000 in BEP money that will be sent to us from the Tennessee Department of Education for just this year, so far, yes. Okay, seeing no lights, we'll move on. No discussion, <laughs> okay. Um, now the next item I asked to put on there, uh, I, I got to meet with Dr. Woodard and, and Dr. Marzak and, and go through the PowerPoint, spend almost two hours doing that. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I know y'all have heard about me being a teacher, but I was an art teacher, so all the times that they trained us about what all these things meant, I didn't pay attention to it because it didn't affect me. So I asked them, well, full disclosure, uh, I asked them to let me look at them. Well, I, I was able to look at them and ask questions and, and understand what each one meant, how our attendance, our, all of those things affect the uh, scores of the school, some of which we have no control over. And uh, because it took a good long time and I felt like that when I left that I, understand, I understood a lot better, I th thought rather than just taking the time at a, at a work session that it would be part of something. We need to have a retreat. We have a lot of things we need to discuss that together in an informal sentence to plan a time we can have a retreat, but that, that Dr. Woodard would be able to bring them to us I did ask him, and they did send out the PowerPoint to you. Uh, once again, if I'd have gotten that PowerPoint, I wouldn't have known a whole lot more than I know now because it's hard to read it. It's hard without the explanation of it. And uh, so th that's why the, it's on here to have a board retreat. I would like to have it sometime. I would like to have it. Well, it's really going to be up to you all. It won't be any good to have a retreat unless all of you buy into it. I need everybody there. It's just great that we're all here tonight, that we're all here to listen and talk and, and clear everything out and know what we got to vote on and all that stuff. It's so important. It's important to the people that put you in office to know that you're going to be here. So looking at their calendars, if we did it in September, another, another aspect of it is the commission may appoint somebody tonight. If not, they'll appoint them in September. Uh, to take Mr. Penning's position. I'm hoping it will be tonight, but I'm not sure of that. Uh, but regardless of once they're appointed, they could attend the retreat as some of you did when you were elected before we were actually sworn in. Uh, so my tentative date, just my tentative date, would be the 28th of September. I would want to have it here. I don't want to spend any money. I don't want to take us on a trip. I, you know, I, I want to have it so we come we have an, uh, a fairly flexible agenda. I think we need to talk about the scores, fully understand where we are, where we need to be, and how we need to get there. I think we need to discuss diploma and what the future of that is, and I know we're going to have a report from Ms. Marinci on that tonight, but I think we need to have an in-depth discussion of it. I, I think that we need there are other, other areas that we need to talk about. What was? Yes, we need to have a talk about the strategic plan. There, there have been comments made of, well, maybe we need to change the plan. This is a great time to have that discussion because we are funding parts of the strategic plan and not funding other parts of the strategic plan. We are funding things that are outside the plan, so we need to have a conversation about how do we bring that all back together. And frankly, too, as you've heard me say, that nowhere in our strategic plan are we saying where we want our, our staff to be, both physically, you know, with their financial, where, where do we want to be in five years and ten years with our uh, paying, whatever? I, 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 uh, we voted Dove Laconan a 3% raise tonight at financial management. He earned it. He deserves it. And the comment was made by our mayor. All of our county employees got a 3% raise, so I think that, that we should do that. All of our county employees got a 3% raise, and I'm going, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> you know, not really. They, oh, oh, you know. Uh, you know, that, not y'all, not I don't want to hear about that. But, and I also had a discussion before the meeting, a really open discussion among the commissioners sitting there as we were waiting to start it about beginning salary. And, and they were realizing that Wilson County is giving a $4,000 bonus mm -hmm. for math teachers. They can't get them. Mm -hmm. Spring Hill High School lost a 
uh, an English position because they had, didn't have anybody apply for it. We're not getting the applications. And so then they said to me, well, how do we stand now, Ms. Kendrick? Because they heard me at the commission meeting telling them we're 13 among the 14 counties, and now we're at the bottom. And so then, then we had the discussion. I said, you know, they need to make a living wage to come and to become a teacher. And so they, you know, some of them seem to think, well, you know, you're right. You know, I said, and one, one of the commissioner's wife has now gone to Marshall County where she's actually making more money. So, you know, what, what can you say? What can you say? So the, I think this needs to be part of our discussion. This needs to be part of our commitment. Uh, and so that would be part of the retreat as well. And any, I'd be open to anything that you all want to add to that so that we together, I think every year in September we need to try to have a time to have a retreat. And, and looking at the calendar, the 21st or the 28th, are those two possible dates? If yes. we could look at those two, yes. are you good with? Okay. Um, either one is okay with me. What? What is Miss Parker? That's what I was just going to ask. Is if there could be more than one option? I know I have a conflict on the 28th and wouldn't be able to be there. So. 21st is okay with me. I will make it work. As long as we don't get in football season, I think we'll be okay. Well, we will be in football season. <laughs> oh, the 28th we would be. Well, 21st, 21st would be fine with me. 21st you will be too, but okay. I, mean, I don't know what I'm you schedule is. On the 21st. <laughs> You're, you out of town. How many of you could make it on the 21st? So David will be gone, Donna will be gone, about half. Okay, you'll be gone. 21st is good for everything, but everybody but you too. The 14th. What about the weekend before the 14th? 14th. Yeah. 14th. Okay. Hmm? I see three or four of the 14. Let's just make it, huh? Ms. Kinsley. Yes. It's uh, going to be daytime. Yes, it would be Saturday. Uh, what, when we had the collaborative conferencing workshop, we had it here. We came at 9 o'clock. We had a break at 11.30. You had a box lunch that Shirley was nicely picked up. We might pay for it ourselves so that nobody thinks we're spending any money. We shouldn't. But she picked up a Chick-fil-A box lunch, and we had a break, and then we, I would think that we would try to be through by 2 o'clock at the latest. Perfect for me. And maybe Thanks. maybe before that, depending. Okay. Is it tw start at 9 or 8? What do you want to start at 29? What do you all say, 9 or 8? I don't care. 6 to noon. Um, if we could just... If we said six to noon, you'd have to have breakfast too. No, we can't afford that. <laughs> Go ahead. Nine, nine is nine okay? Nine is good. Because I don't even—I I can't even know my schedule, but I'm just saying to be here on time for yes. me. Because sometimes I run over. I think I think the twenty-first. Okay, so I I see the most of you. Uh, if you if there's a conflict, if we need to change it, let me know. But right now we'll say the twenty-first here at Hop. Twenty-first or fourteenth? Oh, the fourteenth. Wait a minute. Okay. How many of you cannot be here on the 14th? One, two, three. How many cannot make the 21st? One, two, three. How many cannot make the 28th? One, two, three. What about a Sunday? Yeah, that's good. No, a Sunday afternoon. What do you think about that? I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. What'd she say? Oh, I know. I mean, I'll just say it's 7 o'clock, and to do two extra hours of discussion with Dr. Woodard about our academic scores, we could do that during the work session. I mean, we're already here. I'm not saying tonight, but I'm just saying... I don't know that we need to have a special not retreat tonight. just to do. I'm well, not saying tonight. I'm not asking for it tonight. That's not what I'm saying. Right. We also have a, a meeting that, based on the last meeting, lasted less than an hour. So, I mean, we can have some of these discussions without necessarily having to, to go to a retreat. And I do think it's important for, which I guess maybe Tommy will be there to tape it, but I think it is important for people in the community have an understanding of what these scores are because we get inundated with questions and they don't understand them either. I don't know what the best time is for that I, discussion. I don't, I don't either. That's, that's why I was coming up with it, how, how important it is for the community as well 
to understand it because, you know, we, we all tend to, to look at what, what doesn't look good, you know, and, and yet there are some real pluses in, in the scores and, and, and all. And there's some explanations and all and uh, not excuses, just knowledge. Knowledge is, is what we need about it. So I just thought that that we benefited from these retreats in an informal way, being able to discuss these things. Yes. Thank you, Chair Kinzer. Um, one, two of the items I think that we need to discuss if we're going to have a retreat, one of those is right sizing. Um, that's something that we can't solve in a one, two hour discussion, but we need to have some lengthy discussion around um, what our staffing looks like and how we set a staffing formula going forward. And then the second conversation uh, would be around salaries for our support employees. Had an interesting conversation with bookkeepers on. Um, yeah, early. Some midweek, mid yeah. midweek last week with county finance, and um, we've been working to ensure that that all of our bookkeepers are following uh, the Tennessee Uniform and account, uh, Accounting Policy and aligning those practices to the 81 acts with some very good meetings with bookkeepers, hearing some of their frustrations, hearing their concerns. And one of their concerns uh, for bookkeepers and for our tennis clerks, they are the lowest paid individuals in our district. And uh, they really feel the, the, the crunch of, um, of uh, inflation. And so they would like to, uh, uh, in addition to our teachers, they want to see us you know, raise the pay. So we need to look, have a conversation around what this looks like for our support employees and also our bus drivers. I want to advocate for the bus drivers as well and obviously for our teachers. But I mean, uh, some of our support employees are really starting to feel the crunch and that came up at our meeting on Wednesday uh, with county finance. And so those two items, right sizing and uh, salaries for support are things I think that we need to discuss in addition to academics and uh, where we're going with our strategic plan. I guess one of the things about looking at the scores is right now they're on everybody's mind and just being able to clear up and, and understand them even for like you said for the community and all so would it be possible for us to just have a weekday but session just just to t take up those items not just an agenda uh, getting ready for a board meeting but we could start at five o'clock we could start at 4 30 whatever you thought and uh and try to to get some of this that way just so we can get together I think if we waited and did the scores at the, I mean, it just seems that now's the time that we need to understand them, I, I feel like. A Tuesday meet, what, I'm looking at a frown in here, Mr. Moore. So I've got, I've got two separate things that I'm, I'm looking at here. So what would be the uh, the date of the next the September board meeting? It's the fourth. It's w remember we we changed the second and fourth for September and October because of Labor Day. So the board meeting will be on September the ninth. Ninth. Would it be any? Uh, because I see kind of two pieces here, and I understand Ms. Parker's point about being able to go over the. Um, scores separately but I think there's some other issues we need some time to delve into mm -hmm. could this be could the scores be perhaps discussed uh, could we have that board meeting on the ninth as she said our board meeting has been going about an hour lately mm -hmm. uh, could we not immediately adjourning that have a s s meeting where all we talk about is scores and then we also schedule a work session I mean a, uh, a retreat of some kind to, to tackle some of these other issues I, I think that's a great idea because uh, you know we're, we're doing the work uh, in this meeting and so that our, our actual meetings have not been that long so maybe we could just have a special work session staff after be that able to, to address that fully at, at that meeting at that night September at the September night September night it would be after the meeting after is the what meeting. I, I, and anybody what I was, in yeah. the community or it, that way it'd be we just people would be here and, brief and break and start back up with just nothing but I think that's a great idea scores. okay or, or whatever the scores is that okay, uh, Mr. Dudley? I'm sorry. You can live with that, okay? But that's just to talk about scores, not all the other as well. All right. So then, do we want to schedule another work session for all uh, or retreat on a Saturday? On Sunday, maybe from one to five or something like that so that I'll just mention that that entire weekend of the 20th through the 22nd I'm gone like gone 
Okay. Gone. 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 Well, what about the 15th? Okay. I just have a bridal shower for my granddaughter, but what the heck, no. <laughs> no. I, I, honestly, you can have it the 29th, but I've got to go to the shower. But I won't, I can just go and then come back. <laughs> How many of you cannot do the 29th? Just the two of us, three of us, okay. <sighs> okay, what about September the 8th? It's Grandparents' Day. I won't, yeah. That's the beginning of our top secret funding conference, and that's my, uh, my Okay, what about... We're going to meet on the, um, we're meeting September the 8th and September the 22nd. What if we met on a Tuesday um, or Wednesday uh, at 5 o'clock and do as much as we can do like that, the 16th or the 17th? I'm in September. The 17th is a Tuesday, the, uh, the 18th is a Wednesday, the 19th is a Thursday. What? You're going the whole week? I will not. I won't be, be here until 5. Well, whenever you could get here. You could get here. Right. I'm just trying to, huh? 17th works. Anybody else? Nathan will just get here late. Can you? Okay, then that's what we'll do. We'll call some sort of... of Emergency in. <laughs> well, is that okay with you all? Then we'll just meet for whatever time it takes. Um, you know, maybe we can have some snacks or something here. Can it start earlier than five? It, I can, but I don't know about the rest. What do you all think? Can we start at four? Four. Four, take a little short break for something to eat and then take it up four o'clock? Okay, four four o'clock on the seventeenth. Okay, good. All right. I I think that next on the agenda, Dr. Marzak, is the Educational Research and Development Institute conference. Yeah, but, uh, I'll back to the board meeting. We can you do just that. do it then. Yes, okay. Sir. All right. Next on the agenda is the diploma, and Ms. Marinci, you're going to report on the meeting today, right? We did have a diploma meeting today. Oh, it's me. Okay. And uh, one of the the things that were br was brought up is that. Um, we our 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 devices have been funded um, through the last um, when I February. February. Yeah, the devices have been funded um, this until February. Um, we have uh, and it completed the um, the contract. So um, coming in February, we have a chance to buy out the devices. Um, we have 250 teacher computers that will need to be bought in uh, February, by February 3rd. We have another 250 teacher devices that will need to be bought out um, in April, by April um, 26th, and then another 162 teacher devices um, that will come uh, due or bought out by um, May 8th. So that's a total of 662 teacher devices. If we do not do this, we will have that many teachers that have no devices. Um, the recommendation from the um, 
Diploma Committee was that we um, fund the position that we have for um, the Supervisor of Digital Integration. Um, we need to um, fund that and he would or he or she would be responsible for um, developing a plan for what we're going to do. Um, also the 700 go ahead and um, purchase the 700 uh, teacher devices and that's about $200,000. That will um, get us through uh, probably at, at least another two years. And also, um, they were interested in, um, in purchasing the 2,500 um, student devices um, at the end of the year. And uh, we would own those devices. And then we would have those devices for um, approximately two to three years. Um, during that time, um, this supervisor of digital integration would <laughs> develop a plan to um, to put money aside to purchase and replace those. Um, now, the thing that, that I didn't know was that our $300,000 that we had asked for in, in capital, in the capital budget was not funded. Um, I, I didn't understand that. I, because when we sent it to them, it was in there. When it came back, apparently it wasn't in there. So um, that's another 300,000 worth of devices that we would need. With this plan, we would be, um, if we can purchase three, use that 300,000 to purchase the other devices we would need, by the next year, 2020, we would go uh, two to one across the county. Let me, I think be able to, <laughs> what? to explain better. Yeah, if I could follow up with that, I appreciate it. So I'll say it in some different terms. The way we, we structured this with um, just the nature of the way it worked out, we were able to buy, purchase out the end of those leases we had talked about over the last year or so. Um, the reality of that is, however, what's going to happen in the way she said, it's a little different than what she's saying. Basically, come February of this year, we are going to have to start handing computers back. Um, to, and those are teachers' computers, February, first week of February, essentially. Uh, so the, I guess the problem we as a board need to start to, well, we should have already figured out, to be honest, but we're going to have to figure out is what is our solution for that. Um, I, we are no longer, from what I understand, Tommy's around here, we're no longer purchasing desktop-type computers. Uh, I think from a price point standpoint, we're just not. So what that means is we're going to have teachers that simply don't have any kind of device at all. Um, which I don't think is ex acceptable. I don't, I don't know how we can even operate that way. So uh, as a board, we need to figure out how we address that. So there's approximately 700 teacher devices that are going to go back over, they're gonna, over a few, few months period. So basically between February and May, all of, almost all of our teachers' devices are going to be going back. So they will have nothing. Um, starting mid-May, I think, student the rest of the student leases, again, we bought these on leases, so those devices would have to be rounded up and sent back as well if we did not purchase them. Um, that's kind of a separate issue in my mind to the, what the teacher issue is of having those. But again, I think as a board, we really need to have some discussions on, on what do we do about that. I know we've, um, I think more than ever, in, in the, what I gathered from the diploma meeting was that having someone in charge of this is vitally important. I think that's kind of where some of these things have slipped through the cracks, in my opinion, on, on getting this. I, I know we've got lots of different people working on pieces of that, um, but I think they can only do as much as they can on, on top of their plates of their other jobs. Um, so I, I think I would like to hear opinions from other board members, honestly. First step to me would be to make sure we're addressing that the fact that teachers are, are going to be not having devices which in my mind is not acceptable. And again, I think we need to get away from talking about laptops or what that device is. The fact is you're going to have a teacher that has a classroom that doesn't have any way to put scheduling in to any kind of district device to be able to email with parents just to do basic duties. And I just don't see how that's um, acceptable. So I think we need to talk about that and then also talk about um, what we want to do about the fact that students are going to be giving up devices. And I know we've got several schools that are already one-to-one -one or they already use those. What is our plan for how do we replace that? Is that a reasonable avenue to go down is to have a student that's been working on a device for two years perhaps 
So now go back to a book. If that's what it is, what are the costs with that? Is that really what we want to do? Um, I think we ran through some rough numbers. They're going to get some better numbers, I think, talking tonight that on an ongoing basis that this would be roughly about a um, little over a million dollars a year to maintain this kind of device thing. And again, I, I, I have advocated and I had asked that the, the committee kind of split things in half. I would rather see us talk about uh, the teacher devices in a separate than just the one-to-one. -one. I think those are two separate discussions that need to be had. Um, because as far as I'm concerned, a teacher's device is really nothing more than providing her with a, a teacher's textbook or, or any other piece of equipment or a chair to sit at. I think that should be just part of the equipment that a teacher needs to do their job. So I think we need to probably discuss those separately. But So that's where we're at on that. I, and again, I would really like to have some other board members you know, step in. Because this is, again, February, we're going to be giving up some of these teacher devices. And I think very quickly we need to figure out what we're going to do to address that. Well, I, I agree with what you said. I, I think the teacher devices need to be the very first thing that we address. We cannot, you know, they've got to have those devices. Uh, excuse me, Will. Yeah, I was um, curious. Do you have a number for what per device what the buyback is? So how how much are new devices? Like, I know I know we were kind of doing a test run on these. What, so, to, to answer your question, those devices are 294 for brand new, and, and and so I do understand the argument. We actually, because the teacher devices with the i5 processors and, and memory and and the, the upgraded hard drives, we actually, just to compare, I went to a third party vendor and said, hey, we want to buy the, what the teachers have right now, and the prices we got back were anywhere from 350 to 650 dollars. So there's still the value still there. So you know, again, I got asked the question at the diploma meeting, can I guarantee, you know, how long are these going to last? I cannot, but uh, just to land the plane, so to speak, two, $294 is what those cost. It's if you not buy. a comparable device, right? It is not. It is not. It's a lesser, it's got a lesser processor. But, and again, you know, when you, when you start talking about money and what are we trying to do, you know, that's obviously a more affordable option. But, uh, you know, to, to keep, to, if we were going to buy the teacher something, we'd actually be getting a, a better model. Even, and, and, all the front end work's been done with them being set up and, and deployed and all, all the stuff put in Active Directory. Will, if I could pitch in, because we had a lot of discussions about that. I think one of the things we talked about was, was kind of two pieces. If we were to let these devices go back, we would have to logistically, staff would have to, we'd have to approve money, get new devices ordered, and get several hundred devices of whatever we decide to go with brought in and in place and set up and ready to go. This is sounding worse and worse the more I talk about it set up and ready to go f by February, essentially. Um, I think, and again, he, did, he doesn't want to speak to timelines because I'm sure he doesn't want to be held to how long a device can last. But I think realistically, looking at the devices we have, I think it's realistic to expect to get another two to three years out of each one of these devices. We've got three years out of them now. I think it's real, and maybe longer. Some of them may, we've got some, I think they said we have some desktops in the system that we've been dragging out somehow, I don't know, for a decade or more. Um, so realistically with some good care some of these devices may last longer um, it's not an ideal situation obviously but i think um i think it, it does buying them out if that's what is chosen to do i think at least it keeps us that transition part they can keep the devices and we can look still continue to look at other devices my intention i know just one more piece on that was that we stop worrying as a board get away from the discussion about which device we use and start making sure we're just funding the fact that these things need to take place and let technical experts figure out how to make that happen within the budgetary constraints we set. That's the direction I would prefer to go because I have no clue what device to replace these with or what needs to happen. I would rather let whoever is in charge of this take care of that and just make sure we, we secure the funding to, to keep our staff with the equipment they need and if we could choose to go one to one, two to one, whatever else to continue that to make sure we have the money in place to make that happen. Last question, I'll be finished. Um, so there is no money in the budget for these purchases. We would have to find this elsewhere or fund balance or is that correct? Yeah, the, the only money that was included in the budget was the 100 or so thousand to finish out the the, um, the lease, which we just paid, Hundred, I think 110,000 maybe. Yeah, so there's no more money in the 1920 budget, agreed. 
it came to our attention that we we had that this position was in the budget, although we did not know that for some reason. Uh, how did we not know that? I can't answer that. All I know is I was trying to plan the year, trying to figure out what was going on, and so I asked the question, said, you know, uh, talked about capital, trying to figure out about devices, and they said, you know, basically was told, hey, you know, this is what was funded out of the capital. The lease was funded and the buses, so, and I was like, there's no extra money. And so then we got to talking about positions and looking at line items and, and Stan and I had talked many times and we knew the number we had turned in and the number we had turned in had the position in it. Okay. So th then that's like, hey, well, guess what? That, yeah. That's in there. It. It, it wasn't what we turned in, it was added to what we That's correct, right. So the number that we turned in, there was an additional funding. Yeah, we, we turned, I can't remember the number, but what, what was it? was 70 in the salary line item then we turned in for technology. Okay. Any other discussion about this? Yes, Ms. Parker. Uh, oh, I can tell you, Mr. 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 Penning would sit there and he'd hit me just to come over and look over here. So, so that's what you have to do, throw one of these. I want to throw a at her. <laughs> Mr. Atkinson. Uh, <clears throat> just made me lose some train of thought. Uh, well, how much money we need by February? Well, what kind of money we're looking at for February with these computers we currently got? I'll answer that because I'm, I'm doing this from my memory. I think Can you put me up on screen again, Dave? Well, he's pulling that. I from my memory, and, and I think we were looking at roughly um, the, just the teachers in February was just under 200000 Is that correct? One uh, In that ballpark? No, Here it is. If you do the yeah, whole, yes. is that correct? 69 This is the lease that to buy out what to do in February. Well, it will come up here in just a minute. But it's 69 so that would be the February lease. But keep in mind, there's there's several leases. Yes, We've got a yeah, series of four or five leases here that are five yeah, I'm that, that to, are rolling. I'm just trying to stay on the current right now, so yeah. we're trying to see where the money's coming from. To uh, do all the teachers um, is right at 200000 Yes. I, I put up on the screen here, here are the dates the lease is in, and here's the number of computers for each mm -hmm. date. So if you look, 230, 20, 250 computers, 426, 250. Those first 562 are teachers' computers. The last 2,500 are student computers. Stan, yeah, can, you, can yeah, you email that to us? Me. Stan, can you email that to us? Yeah. The board spreadsheet? members, yeah, yeah to the sure. board members, yeah. And uh, okay. I, I just try and think of where the money's going to come from yeah. right now. Uh, this this February. sheet doesn't have the buyout cost on it. We have that separate. But I can send you the buyout cost. We can add the buy, a column with the buyout cost. Okay, here. yeah, yeah. Uh, I see. We had some money left over from that what we talked about earlier. Uh, Yeah, the uh, incarceration fees. Yes, sir. How yes. much money do we have left over there? Uh, uh, 163 minus 45. 120 or so thousand. Okay. And then we've got to figure out where our books close at the end of the year, how yes. much unspent money we have. We don't know what that number is yet. I asked for that number today. They weren't ready yet because the books aren't fully closed. Okay. Closed, so. okay. I'm just kind of looking at that. Yeah see where that money's going to go to and this is something I think we can use that money towards towards education I'm just saying I think that once they close the books and we'll be able to get a, a clear picture of fund balance when we trust and know it's there that maybe by the time we you know if they close the books this next week that we'll get a, the financials on that see what where we are with fund balance at the end of the year and then hopefully we're going to be able to add to fund balance as we go Ms. Parker I was just going to say, I understand that there may be a feeling that there's a need for this diploma lead position, but when we're looking at having to come up with $700,000 that's not budgeted, I have a real hard time adding a position. I just, I would rather go to our teachers, I would rather go to our students. Personally, I would have liked to have seen that lead position money go in, back into textbooks since we cut that half a million. I just think we have a lot of needs for our students and for our teachers that we need to make sure that we address before we start adding to the top. Because when we start doing raises, 
that just increases what that amount is and it lowers what we have available to spend on our students and on our teachers. Okay, any other discussion, Matt? And I assume that we'll discuss this further at our work at the retreat, maybe come up with some more concrete plans going forward, okay? Uh, as far as the position, it's in the budget, you'd have to make a budget amendment to change that. So I'll be happy, I mean, we can leave it on the agenda for the board meeting. Well, and let me just say, I had talked to Doug about this particular item and he said, it's no problem. We just as a board have to give him direction on if we want to have a budget amendment to allocate it towards that expense or textbooks or whatever we want to. But I feel like as a board, we have, a budget was approved with an understanding that we did not in, add any additional positions. And then to find out after the budget was approved or was sent to the county, no, actually we did approve a position that we did not realize that we were approving. I think it reflects on us that we added to the top as opposed to, especially when we were sitting there trying to cut for all the, the other things. Um, I just think that we, this might be an area where we do want to look at doing a budget amendment. For me, I would like to. Okay. Uh, and, and doing a budget amendment is way of life. <laughs> it's, it's not a problem at all. Ms. Marinci. Um, I would suggest that we have the discussion um, at our retreat before we do any budget amendments, that we we um, hash this out and find out exactly what we're going to do. Um, I think that if we're going to um, do um, use devices in our district, that we have to have somebody. We keep putting all of that pre um, all of that work on people that have other jobs. And um, I think that it's something that we need to hash out and look at before we make any budget amendment. My suggestion would be, I mean, it's in the budget, so either we're going to take it out of the budget, which would require a budget amendment, no big deal, or we leave it in there. But I would rather have the discussion about it at the work session, not decide until maybe the next board meeting after that. So that it wouldn't be part of this board meeting until we can uh, speak about it together as a board, okay? All right. All right, then moving on. Um, well, is the position no? posted Sorry, now? Sorry, Ms. Though? Parker. Sorry, is the position posted now? No. Okay, thank you. Oh, real quick. I have messaged Doug to make sure, like, to get clarification. So if he messages me back since he's at the commission meeting, I'll let you all know how okay. I ended up in the budget or where he got that in there, so. Okay, just in case. Thank you. Oh. Right. I asked him because I was like, how did that end up in there? Because I'm intrigued now myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's all y'all's authority wherever you want to move the money. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we could, we could, we could change it anything in the, if, if we so deem it, just be a, and the, the beauty, we, not the beauty, but we changed our whole meeting concept so that we can get budget amendments to the commission faster and then we have these holidays and we've just gone back to but still I think they'll be more, it'll, it'll still be better yeah all right then next is the instructional uh, bids for this one is to purchase um, equipment for Battle Creek correct thank you chair Kinzer uh, we are still learning how to use this BOE connect so my attachment disappeared so still trying to figure this out. So we do have uh, this information on here. I'm going to ask Dr. Penner to come up and kind of give you a brief overview of what he would like to purchase, and then we'll bring you the attachment and the information at the next board meeting, uh, hopefully to obtain your vote. Dr. Penner. Thank you. This, is, this request is for um, athletic equipment that we did not have money to spend um, prior to the beginning of school. So this is um, additional additional funds that, that we need for our winter and spring sports. Okay, let me, let, me, let me just say something about this because I did get some calls about it, you know, local funds being mm -hmm. used and not being used and so forth. Sure. And now that we're under financial management, you have to have um, approved vendors. I mean, Correct. It, it's a process you go through. So I've looked into that and actually financial management discussed 
not in the open meeting, but discuss what it would be because I truly would like to see as many local businesses get the business as you did, and I think you even went to the local ones for this equipment because it had to be, you had to have a preferred vendor, one that had been approved, then you had to go with the Nashville. Is that correct? Yes. Well, we we have three times so far in the course of looking for um, jerseys and and sports equipment gotten multiple quotes from different vendors some of them are local some of them are national and consistently so far our uh, BSN sports has been the by far lowest lowest price um, and the quality has been good and the customer service has been good so we continued to use them for this that, that that's why this particular one is I understand, and I, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying going forward as a, as a system, as a community, yes, I would like to see, I don't care if it's paper towels or automobiles or whatever, any time that we can buy something local, even if it's maybe a little bit more, and they, they're, they're, <coughs> some places have like a 5% ratio, if we can use them. And I have spoken to a couple of vendors who are going to go through the process with Doug's office to make themselves uh, and it's it's just a simple thing of simply telling the contact person if any of you know anybody that needs to do this or know this it's just a simple process of saying the address the contact person and so forth and then they would be your purchase the purchasing department at uh, Doug's office would know they're on the list right and that's it okay yes ma'am mr. Moore yeah uh, where does the, the funding for this coming from is this already been part of what we had approved early on Yes, sir. Any other discussion? I'm, okay, so can I put this on consent? No. Okay, Ms. Parker says no. Any other? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is the sale of surplus buses. Also, no, not. Who, what, is that something we need to talk about? I can speak to that if you want me to. It's just that is the uh, – I know I've got it here somewhere. I was just trying to find it. The uh, surplus buses, um, these are the ones that we had after we repl that we replaced this year. We're asking to transfer bus 24 to the city of Mount Pleasant Fire Department. Uh, we've given buses to local entities before. This one will actually be used for training. Um, let me get down to the next page. I apologize. I'm still, I'm like Dr. Woodard, still learning to use this new system. Um, it's, it's training that will involve Mount Pleasant, Columbia, Spring Hill, and Murray Rural Fire, and it'll be actually training on how to get people out of a school bus. And so we think this is a very good use of a, a surplus bus. The other bus, uh, we had, you had approved already the transfer of bus um, 202 to the Sheriff's Department. We're asking to change that to 201 and then put 202 and 255 for sale on gov deals. Okay. It's uh, just 201 is a little bit better bus, so. Okay. Miss. And, and just as a reminder to people, th these buses generally don't bring, bring much. Bring, bring $2,500, $3,000. Okay. All right, thank you. We can't fund diploma with them. <laughs> no. Okay, I assume we can put that on consent. No. No? Okay. And that will go on new business. Uh, and I've gotten down to FYI, and I do have some an things I want to just announcements to you. Um, we are having, we are hosting the TSBA fall meeting. I don't know if all of you have signed up to go, but if you haven't, please do so. I think it would be great to have as many there as possible. We're, we're, and if you haven't been to the new school, uh, this would be a great opportunity to see it. We're going to put our best foot forward, uh, Mr. Penner. And where are we going to have the meeting? Where do we decide in the, uh, mi the meeting? In the meet library. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, the date is the fifth. Thursday the fifth. I mean, yeah, September the fifth. Two weeks uh, from Thursday. Uh, And it'll be before our, our board meeting, so I just want to be sure to, to remind you all, if you haven't, to let Shirley know if you're going, and uh, hopefully as many can be, because we'll be hostesses. We're hosting hostess 
uh, to them and uh, showing them around the school and all. Um, seemed like I had something else. Oh, I don't know anything else, but I do really, 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 as a board chairman, appreciate that every one of you all are here. It makes a huge difference not to worry about whether we have a quorum if it's a meeting or having, if you're not here and you don't, maybe don't watch the videotape and know what's been said, working together, you all, you all are, are great to work with when we can all work together. And I think that makes a difference, so I appreciate it. Is there any other business to bring up tonight? Okay, then we are adjourned.